Welcome back to another in our series of great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the New Testament letter, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul's final instructions to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Cretans has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he is strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against him. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Anesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, and I left Trophimus, who was ill, at Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. There are perhaps those out there that have shared in the experience of putting off a visit with a loved one. We get busy and before we know it, weeks and months and even years have gone by. And it slips our mind and gets pushed back in priorities. Then, one day, we get the call that they have passed away. That's when it really hits us. The guilt and regret of really meaning to visit. We had the best of intentions, but you know what they say about good intentions. One man tells a story of calling his good friend he had from meaning to call when he returned from his winter in the South. A little girl answered the phone, and when he asked for him by name, the girl burst into tears and while crying said, My grandpa is dead. He actually called the house during the funeral dinner. Ain't it funny how time slips away, declared the songwriter. How regrettable that we wish after the fact so many times that we could have had that one last conversation with someone who passed away suddenly. Here in 2 Timothy, we have what is believed to be the last of Paul's letters. From the eternal internal evidence, we gather that Paul is still in prison. We read in chapter 1 and verse 8, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And again in chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Anesiphorus, for he often refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me earnestly and found me. And finally, here in this chapter, in verse 6, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. This departure Paul speaks of is most certainly not for another missionary journey, but rather his departure from this life. He speaks of the quandary he is in to the church in Philippi when he writes in Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 and 24, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. 
I am hard-pressed between the two, my desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. I wonder how many times those words Ananias spoke to him so many years ago in Damascus had rung in his ears. God tells Ananias in Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and 16, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is chosen an instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how he much he must suffer for the sake of my name. How did Jesus show Saul, later to become Paul, how he was going to suffer? Had he resigned himself to the fact that he would suffer greatly for the kingdom? When he tells of the many times and ways that he had endured persecution, had he ever wondered at those punishing blows given him? He lists those in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, many years before this letter to Timothy. And who knows how many more he had endured. Now, in this last chapter of the last letter, Paul beckons Timothy twice to come to him. In verse 9, do your best to come to me soon. And with even more urgency, in verse 21, do your best to come before winter. Come before winter. Can't you just hear Paul's voice sounding out these words to his beloved son in the faith? How heartbreaking when he declares, Luke alone is with me, in verse 11. He makes some earnest requests. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books and above all the parchments, in verse 13. Perhaps the most heartwarming of the requests is when Paul tells Timothy, Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful for me in the ministry. After all, this same Mark had become a point of contention between Paul and Barnabas. So much so that they parted ways as they were about to leave on their journey to revisit places they had preached the gospel just a short time before. Now, all these years later, we find Mark has matured and Paul considers him useful to him. As Paul closes this letter and the last of his letters, he lists several individuals whose names are lost to history, but were vital to his time there. Eubulus, Pudens, Linus, and Claudia. We are left to wonder if Timothy actually made it to Rome before winter. But there is something rather profound in that statement for us to ponder. If Timothy were to travel by ship, then certainly there was a window of opportunity for him that would close once the gales of winter sent in, as Paul had experienced in his own voyage to Rome as a prisoner in Acts 27. There was certainly a season fit for sailing, and once past may not come again in time. So it is with many opportunities in life. Opportunities for one last conversation. Opportunities for mending relationships. Opportunities to respond to the gospel call. These and many more may find a favorable season that once passed may never come again. I wonder how many you and I have let slip away in our lifetime, having not made that voyage before winter. Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.